Suarez at short Jesse Winker in right Juan Perez is at second Philip Irvin in left the catchers Tucker Barnhart and Tim Adelman the pitcher will bat ninth. Cubs defensively Kyle Schwarber's in left this afternoon Albert Almora Junior will play center John Andriola yeah, Andrea Lee is in right third to first is Bryant Young Lastella Rizzo. Victor Caratini young catcher is behind the plate. And our Cubs starter brought to you by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois the card to carry through it all is 26 year old right hander Eddie Butler having a very nice spring he's uh, won four games already he's pitched to a 2.70 ERA Cubs got him from the Colorado Rockies on February 1st. Uh, one time a very promising prospect in the Rocky organization he has not yet really had a lot of success at the big league level but he's got a good arm and having a heck of a spring a pretty intriguing guy. So your umpires today I believe that's uh, Dan Bellino back of the plate uh, I had Dana DeMuth on my list but I think spring training you're allowed to kind of do whatever you want. Here we go it's Eddie Butler to Billy Hamilton first pitch swinging and he grounds out to La Stella. That's a good start. It's an efficient start. Here comes Alcantara. Hit a two run homer yesterday. His third of the spring. Muller is 26 years of age. He was a, a supplemental pick after the first round of the draft in 2012. So, number 46 overall out of Radford University. Swing and a miss. Good let up. Four pitch mix, fastball, slider, curve, and change. Andrioli ranging into right center. Two quick outs. And it'll bring up Mr. Votto. Kyle Hendricks thought he had him struck out in his first inning plate appearance. Ended up taking three walks in the ball game. And uh, Kyle, I, I like his post, post game comments. He loves the challenge of facing a guy like Votto. So he worked on some different things that he might not normally do just to see how Votto would react. Yeah, Votto's one of those guys he will take you out of your game plan. I got I got to just do something completely different against him. Well and probably not a terrible idea in a spring training start to just plant another seed right. Can't hurt. Knowing you might face him four or five times down the road in the regular season. Yeah especially for a guy like Vada who's going to remember that seed because a lot of hitters wouldn't. Sixty nine degrees and it is a gorgeous day. We had a ton of wind that really did seem to affect the game and yesterday maybe three of the home runs would not have left the yard without the wind but much calmer conditions today. Votto really choking up on the bat and he just punches one into left. I think when you see that swing and you think about Anthony Rizzo's development as a hitter you, you can totally see that Rizzo watches Votto right. Yeah you he change chokes up. Yeah you change who you are as a hitter the best ones do depending on who the opposing pitcher is what the count is what the game situation is. You know a guy like Rizzo and Votto to a certain extent as well they know they're supposed to drive the ball but certain counts certain pitchers two strikes you change your game a little bit and you're more willing to, to, to flip one the other way and we've seen it with Votto throughout his career and we've seen it from Anthony over the last couple of seasons. Suarez takes a strike. When registered at 93 miles an hour Butler will max out around 97 so he's got plus stuff.
Suarez play second short third will be their third baseman to start the year. Cut the miss. And it's one and two. Short lead by Votto. Two balls, two strikes. So we've talked about Mike Montgomery, who will begin the year in the bullpen as kind of a hybrid starter reliever, could maybe make a start or two down the road. I think if you're looking for another candidate to possibly join the rotation at some point due to an injury or what have you or a double header could be this guy. Yeah absolutely. Uh, and, and I think he's done a real nice job. This spring letting everybody know what he's capable of and again he, you know he's had his struggles with the Rockies last year he had a 7 1 7 ERA. Made nine starts also eight relief appearances. It's going to be a tough play. Bryant will barehand and he got him. Chris Bryant in front of family and friends with a nice defensive play to end the Reds first. Lineup: Dave Martinez managing this club here in Las Vegas. Anthony Rizzo is the leadoff man. We'll tell you why in a second. Bryant, one of uh, four Cubs to homer in the ball game yesterday. Schwarber, Almora, Listella, Chesney Young went deep. So did Victor Caratini. John Andrioli is in right, and Eddie Butler. That's nine. Uh, the Reds uh, defensively. Philip Irvin is in left field. Speedy Billy Hamilton in center. Jesse Winker is a big prospect. He's in right today. Alcantara Suarez, Perez, and Votto. Tucker Barnhart is the catcher again this afternoon. And 29 year old right hander Tim Edelman will do the pitching, or at least some of the pitching. This spring, two up, two down, the ERA above 10. He was 4 and 4 with a 4 in 13 starts with Cincinnati last year. So. Why is Anthony Rizzo leading off? You want to bet? No, he got to the clubhouse and he said to Dave Martinez, Hey, can I hit lead off today? Davey said, Sure. So he and Schwarber switched spots. And that is gone. Maybe he knew what he was going to do. He was going to smile, big smile from uh, Joey Votto down at first base.
Yeah, maybe he knew something nobody else did. <laughs> First pitch. Well, all the things we talk about, Schwarber's value as a leadoff man, Rizzo's the same way, an on base presence with tremendous power. And he glided into that one, didn't he? See, Beautiful. Leadoff men are supposed to know they, they don't swing at the first one, right? Unless they <laughs> like it. There's a lot of a lot of different ways to define a good at bat. And when it ends up on the other side of the wall, that's always a good at bat. <laughs> well, that's a, that's a smart maneuver by the manager. Maybe he had a feeling. Edelman's got a little funk in his delivery. A hesitation move with his leg kick as he delivers the ball. One and two on Bryant. Um, an, an interesting story. He made his major league debut last year. He's 29 years of age. So it's been a long journey for him. Originally a 24th round pick of Baltimore back in 2010. Out of Georgetown University. Turn out. Many big leaguers. Spent a couple of years in independent ball earlier in his career. Pitching for the likes of the Lincoln Salt Dogs. And the New Jersey Jackals. It was a good club. Jackals or the dogs? Yeah. Either one. Yeah. Good nicknames. <laughs> and Bryant lashes one in the right. And a sliding double. Good start for the Cubs. We put up 11 runs. Yesterday. Well, he and his dad worked a lot this offseason uh, uh, on hitting the ball to the opposite field. Thought he was a little bit deficient in that department last year, which gives you some insight into his approach to the game. He was the MVP. Still felt he had some things he needed to tighten up, and he wants to hit the ball the other way with authority more often this year. You haven't seen it earlier this week. You can find it online. Tom Verducci wrote a great story on Chris Bryant, SI.com. And and the the, the line that kind of keeps coming back to you the more you get to know Chris as a person and as a big leaguer is too good to be true, right? Mm hmm He just he checks off all the boxes. What was the little note that he finished second in his class. But he was tied with another student and he let her give the uh, salutatory. Yeah address. he wanted her to, to, to get the recognition. It's great. Not a big surprise that he was basically an all a student. Outside on Schwarber two balls and a strike. The funny thing about this lineup switch is you could do it, right? You could go Rizzo, yeah, Bryant, absolutely. Schwarber. It's absolutely, not yeah. this weird looking thing. Three and one. And it's it's anecdotal based on just the spring games we've watched, but you referenced it yesterday. Just the Amount of pressure that puts on a starting pitcher in the very first inning to have to face these three guys. Yeah, you, you like that leadoff guy to be kind of a punch and Judy that you can be really aggressive with and not worry about him hitting one over the wall or driving one to the wall for extra bases. And he walked him. A homer, double, walk. 
to greet Adelman. He's trying to grab a spot in the Reds rotation to begin the year. Uh, that'll be it for Schwarber. I think it's B. John Rademacher who's listed as number 91 on our roster but I believe he's wearing 92. Ball one. And Albert Almora Jr. Driven to left, and it will go! A three run homer. I guess if you're going to hit cleanup, you got to do that. Yeah, everybody's doing their job. This is a, a clinic the cut hitters are putting on here at the bottom half of the first. Adam is just trying to get settled in out there, and they've ambushed him. Homer double walk, Homer. All these folks up on their feet appreciating the efforts of these Cub hitters. Adelman wants a mulligan in the worst way. And that's center cut. He does not throw particularly hard. He cannot afford to be out over the heart of the plate like that. Almora's hit a really good extra base power here in spring training. Five doubles, a triple, and now two homers. So is this like hitting your first couple of tee shots on hole number one into the woods and you just say OK probably going to take a 10 on this hole but I, let's just start over. Yeah. Yeah. This is, you're Adelman. This is the yeah, and that's the challenge if, um, as a pitcher you just want to get that first inning under your belt kind of survive the first and go from there. He's not a young pitcher, but he's an inexperienced pitcher in terms of you know, the, the big leagues. And that's always one of the things the club is looking for when they evaluate pitchers. How do they respond to an inning like this? Another ball hit hard, but right at Alcantara. So that is the first out, and it'll bring up Chesney Young, the shortstop. Toward third and foul. Young homer to the opposite field yesterday, his second of the spring, batting 342. And he's hit everywhere he's played for average, not for power. Came out of college with a, with a very good resume as a, a guy who could really square up the ball, line drive hitter, use all fields. He's continued to do that as a minor league player. Out toward the alley. Another extra base hit for the Cubs. Young has two. Two homers, two doubles in the inning. This is giving me flashbacks. Getting sweaty palms watching this. Uh, again, he throws up ball over the heart of the plate, and, and Young has advertised. Shoots it the other way. And Billy Hamilton plays a very shallow center field. It didn't matter. He wasn't going to make a play on that ball. Now Victor Caratini. Switch hitting catcher. Well, it wasn't long ago when we looked at the Cubs organizational organizationally and said. There's not much catching depth. Well, that has changed. 
The emergence of Wilson Contreras certainly a big part of that but Cubs are very high on Caratini as well. Yeah he, he's a good looking player 23 years of age. At 291 last year. 277 in his minor league career. That'll get in there. Young will score. Caratini making his way to second. He's got a double. Tim Adelman, he's really hoping what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. He's not having any fun at all here. Ted Power. Assistant <laughs> pitching coach, but uh, the acting pitching coach here. I mean, what, what, what can he say? Yeah, no, he's just, hey man, just, you know. and that's what I mean. It, 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 one, he's probably saying, hey, you know, you maybe a little less aggressive with that fastball, see if you can get the ball down out of a, uh, on some corners, mix in a few breaking balls, perhaps. Did you ever have any managers or pitching coaches who would have just said, will you just stop giving up hits? No, they should have. Yeah, like, are you trying? I think I told you that story once before when I was in camp with the A's and uh, Jamie Quirk was catching and he, he called a certain pitch and I missed my spot by about a foot and a half and somebody hit it off the wall and he came out and was trying to fire me up. He said, you're better than that. I said, well, I, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> But the flashback I was having, I, I pitched an exhibition game in spring training one year against the Texas Rangers at their AAA facility. It was in Oklahoma City at the time. And this was in the days of uh, Juan Gonzalez and Pudge and Ruben Sierra. Uh, Palmero. The third baseman, uh, Palmer, Dean Palmer. Man, they oh. just crushed it. The wind was blowing out. And they just lit me up. Yeah, good memories. Yeah. And Rioli. Safe. So Adelman can't even get a break. He breaks Andrioli's bat, and as a result, it's an infield hit. Yeah, this is where, as a pitcher, you have to have selective memory. You have to go back later on and go, man, they were just finding holes. A little weak ground ball turned into a knock. There's still no action in the Reds' bullpen, but that could change here. Now Butler, the pitcher. First and third, Cubs lead five nothing. Butler fouls away. Yeah, this is a situation in the regular season where Joe likes to use the uh, the safety squeeze. See if they think about putting that on here, or if they just feel like that would be rubbing it in on Adelman a little bit. Butler is four and zero in the Cactus League, and I have to say his chances of going to five and zero look pretty good. In spring training, a starting pitcher does not have to go five innings to qualify for a win. Look at that, and a base hit for Butler, six to nothing. Do you want to say the Butler did it, or should I? <laughs> I think he just did. Wow. So remember, the only out recorded in the inning was the long drive that Lestella hit the third base, and that ball was really centered. Uh, Butler doesn't hit this one all that hard. Maybe we're dropping in front of Winker out there and right. So Rizzo, who started it, with the first pitch home run. Bats again. And there will be some action here shortly in the Reds' pen. Wendelin Batista, right hander, cranking it up. Fastball strike. Oh. 
of the eyes in the inning. Rizzo with a homer. Almora knocked in three with his blast. Caratini with a double. The pitcher Butler with the run scoring hit. Two and two. Look at the pitch count. 33 and counting. And he's only gotten one out. Rizzo strikes out. Two gone. Maybe a situation if they take Adelman out of this game, he'll have to go down to the bullpen and just get his work in to get his pitches up where they need to be. Low for ball one. Six nothing in the first inning. The other thing about Bryant, this is his third major league season, right? Mm -hmm. His batting stance already, to me, looks iconic. The kind of batting stance that I could see if I were 12 that I would be mimicking. And he's just getting his career started. One and two. And he points out in that Tom Verducci article that all the pictures that they have in, in his dad's batting cage uh, of him as a kid, his batting stance is very similar then as it does now. He's made a lot of tweaks over the years, but no real significant changes apparently. Dad would give lessons all day long and early evening hours there would be Chris standing in the doorway with his bat at the age of five ready to take over. This will be the 40th pitch of the inning. Hamilton has it. Huge first for the Cubs. Nightmarish for Tim Adelman. Six nothing after one.
uh, Cubs baseball blog at WGNTV.com. The blog is sponsored by Jeff Vukovic, your nationwide insurance agent, serving the area for 39 years. To join the nation, contact Jeff at JeffVuk.com. Nationwide is on your side. I want to give a, a shout out to a big group back in Chicago watching the game today at River Roast. And they're having a memorial celebration for Chef Luigi Negroni. And he and Chef Hans have uh, cooked for the Cubs many times and very friendly with many of the players. Chef Luigi passed away recently. Cubs lead six to nothing. Jesse Winker will lead it off. First pitch by Butler misses high. Well hit and gone. Winker with a leadoff home run. It's the Reds on the board. I think that is the officially the ninth home run in this series. Uh, that sounds about right, Len. And I don't know if I were set the over under at that high, but there will likely be more before this afternoon is over. Again, the, the wind not blowing. Uh, like it was yesterday. This is still a, a hitter's park. Light air, ball really carries. I didn't think he quite got enough of that one to get it out of here, but obviously he did. Juan Perez fouls off. He's in there because Tony Renda was in the original starting lineup. Tweaked his wrist yesterday. I assume that's why he was scratched today. Called strike. 0 and 2. The dirt that time. The Butler drafted and signed in 2012, made his major league debut in 2014. There are some that feel like the Rockies rushed him to the big leagues and that kind of slowed his development a little bit. Uh, you can draw parallels to Butler and Jake Arietta when you think about the Jake Arietta story. You know, high ceiling guy with the Orioles. Now, I don't think Butler was ever an opening day starter for Baltimore and, and did not have the success that you know, Arietta had some measure of success in his time in Baltimore. Butler really hasn't didn't have that in Denver, but a similar story. High ceiling guy, really good stuff. And uh, change of scenery could could be huge. And you know, Arietta came to the Cubs in his age 27 season. Butler is 26 years of age. It's always a wise proposition as long as your scouting reports are good and the velocity is where it needs to be to take a shot on a former Rocky. People, some may forget that Jake's ERA as an Oriole was five and a half. Next offering is hit in the air. Left field. Rademacher drifting, battling the sun, and he's got it on the dirt. MLB.tv Premium is back and better than ever. Market. Regular season game live on over 400 supported devices. Plus, enjoy almost 300 spring training games and the 2017. World Baseball Classic. A blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.tv for details. Philip Irvin playing left. <laughs> you just tuned in. You missed it. Huge first inning for the Cubs. 
couple of home runs, six runs scored. Quickly hit on the ground right to Bryant. Not a good throw, but Rizzo bails him out. Rizzo combining. Good glove work by both guys. Well, Crow hop and then he spiked the throw. Boy, that's a great pick. That's a tough little in between hop to contend with. The gold glover getting it done over there at first base. Swing and a miss by Barnhart will probably be their starting catcher on opening day. Devin Mezzarocco is coming back from injury. One of three big leaguers from Brownsburg High School in Indiana. Drew Storen, Lance Lynn, teammate, and Lance Lynn, yeah. The base hit. We'll bring up Adelman. Like we have another sellout today. 11,455 here yesterday, Cashman Field. That is a very good representation of the makeup of the crowd. A lot of Cub fans. Kids aren't yet sliding down the hill, but that'll, that'll, come. Yeah. that'll happen in the middle innings, I'm sure. Didn't mean to. And then that will end the inning. Winker with a leadoff homer after an inning and a half. 6 1 Cubs. The one we're in the bottom of the second. The legendary James Taylor returns to Wrigley Field on Monday, July 17th with special guest Bonnie Raitt. 
Don't miss your chance to see this Rock and Roll Hall of Famer. Tickets are available now at Cubs.com slash James Taylor. That little guy's ready for some action. Including this one, the Cubs with seven exhibition games left before opening the regular season a week from tonight in St. Louis. And according to our buddy Ed Hardig, mm -hmm. next Sunday night will be the first time in 16,945 games that the Cubs will begin a season as the defending World Series champions. John Rademacher chops to Votto. Last time was April 14th, 1909, when they beat the Cardinals at West Side Browns 3-1. How about that? Take a look at the uh, Ford drive of the game. Well, there was a lot of damage done in that first inning, including the three-run home run off the bat of Albert uh, Moore Jr., his second long run of the spring. Ford inviting you to visit your local Ford store or buy FordNow.com. on the back pedal. Adelman hoping the analysis of his start today is the following. After a terrible first inning he was really good. And that can happen. Yeah and that, and as I mentioned the last inning for him it was a lot of times when you evaluate a pitcher how do you respond to the adversity you still try to pitch the game, do you, do you, you know, if some guys get frustrated and they just reach back and try to throw harder, uh, they panic, they, they, you know, they, they don't stop competing. Uh, so you're looking for all those things now. Every, every moment in an exhibition game, and the regular season for that matter, too, is, is kind of a teachable moment, both for the player and for the team evaluating him. How does he respond? Does he continue to compete? Does he try to make pitches? Or does he just cave in and start humping it up there out of frustration? And then there's always the guy, and I played with a few of these. Every time they got lit up, they, you know, all of a sudden they start to crank the shoulder or the elbow, and yeah, man, it's they got a little something going on in there. Three and one. Good night. Well, Stella draws the walk. Young who doubled and scored in the first. The other Cubs split squad team in the uh, Padres at Sloan Park in Mesa, Arizona today, trailing 4 0 in the bottom of the second. Alec Mills getting the start for the Cubs in that one. Hey Rob is a Strizny celebrating a birthday today back there. Wish Rob Z a happy birthday. We're what 25 I believe. Not much of a lead by La Stella. Young a one hopper to the second baseman Perez in the inning. Is over. Two out walk. No runs. Six to one. Cubs after two.
MLB.com ballpark app is your free, secure, and convenient way to instantly access Cubs tickets via your mobile device. Download the app at the App Store or Google Play and begin using ballpark today. For more information, visit Cubs.com slash ballpark app. We want to recognize the assistant to the stage manager today, Ashton Rallen Cotter, in our booth. Billy Hamilton. Good work, Ashton. We'll lead it off. Ashton, why don't you go get us a couple ice cream cones? <laughs> no, that's not his job. Is that, is that your job? <laughs> Just oh. try. Corner men pulled in as you have to do at all times against Hamilton. That is not where he's going to make his money is in the air. How to make him to run it down. And yeah, so much of the talk around baseball now is about launch angles and how hitters are working hard to to get the low ball in the air add a little elevation to their game. But it has to be player specific and Billy Hamilton's one of those guys the Reds probably would prefer still trying to get on top of the ball. Hit it on a line or hit it on the ground. Alcantara hoping to be the Reds version of Ben Zobrist. Play multiple positions. He's a switch hitter. And he looks at a strike. Looking, uh, look, looks like he's mixing in more breaking balls now as he's looking to this lineup for the second time. Big league weekend. Cubs have been coming here for a while. Each of the last now 13 spring trainings. 15 and 13 in 28 games overall, dating back to 1993. Change piece. Ooh, maybe curveball. Contra strikes up. That's number one for Butler. When you look at his numbers during this time in Colorado, and even in the minor leagues, didn't rack up big strikeout numbers. So I think there's more there. You know, he's got. We mentioned a plus fastball when he first got started. The scouting reports on him um, were real good changeup, and backed away a little bit from that pitch. And he's got a lot of weapons. First pitch straight change there to Votto that drifted off the outside corner. No, I'm curious. One and one to Votto. Suarez on deck. Two one pitch. Fouled out of play. Reading a story earlier today on uh, advanced analytics in baseball, how teams implement them, how players use them. Bada was quoted in that story a fair bit. You know, he, he said that there's always a fear that you can have too much on your mind when you go to the plate and you can kind of become paralyzed, but he clearly has interest in pitch usage, what pitchers use when they're in a jam. Pitch sequencing, you know, does the, the guy throws two fastballs. Am I going to see a breaking pitch? And now, you know, Votto's got somebody. Somebody was yelling time. Yeah, he's a little aggravated, yeah. and I get it. Yes, I am. You're right. You're 
He is uh, <laughs> talking to the fan in the front row who yelled time. Yeah, that's but the umpire needs to get involved I think in security and uh, can be a little dangerous. Yes. If the pitcher throws and the batter then relaxes that, that could be a real problem. Mm -hmm. Two hits both to the opposite way. He gets that front foot down in a hurry and just trusts his hands. And there it is again, just picking it the other way, a la Tony Gwynn. Yeah, I, I, I generally don't you know, don't necessarily buy the whole. Well, I could hit 40 homers if I wanted to, or I could hit 320 if I wanted to. But you hear that occasionally. I, I think Botto is one of the rare guys who probably could. Yeah, it's decide what, what, which way does he want to yeah. go. Yeah, do you want to sacrifice a little average and generate more power? Uh, you know, they said about Ichiro. Ichiro was the guy you watched him take BP and the raw power that was in there. He, he was the guy who could have probably been a. You know, 30 home run guy with some regularity, but he would have sacrificed batting average. Well, I know the hybrid is. Oh, hybrid. I'd be the one that would like fall back because it would be too much home back and I'd end up on my five. <laughs> <laughs> it's never too much. I know, right? I'm a teacher, Pete. He can he can find himself trying like that. <laughs> Down to the mid of Caratini, but Votto will hang it first. Our Christmas parties are pretty, Stella covering at second. And we go to the bottom of the third. It's all Cubs early, six to one. Cubs checking and an official Cubs MasterCard debit card only available at your local Wintrust Community Bank. 
Go to Wintrust.com slash Cubs to learn more. Member FDIC. Victor Caratini takes ball one. RBI double in the first. Hit a two run homer. In the ball game yesterday. Garrettini was the second round pick of the Braves in 2013. Out of the Miami Dade. Traded to the Cubs a couple of years later, the uh, deal that sent James Russell and Emilio Bonifacio to Atlanta. Full count, three and two. Struck him out. Second strikeout for Adelman. And I get why Caratini took that pitch. And a whole lot you're going to do with it. The perfect pitcher's pitch. And Rioli with. Broken bat infield hit his first time. Big cut and a miss. <laughs> See the story out of Indians camp. Our uh, buddy Tom Hamilton, the uh, Indians radio voice. Welcome to Brody Chernoff to the booth late in the ball game a couple of days ago. Brody is uh, Mike Chernoff, their general manager. Br Brody's his son. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, he, I guess Tom asked Brody if he had any information to divulge. <laughs> he responded, quote, he's trying to get Lindor for seven more years. <laughs> and apparently that was the first time that the Francisco Lindor extension had been mentioned publicly. Oh, that's great. How old is the little guy? Uh, I think six. That is awesome. It's awesome that the kid would know that to begin with. All <laughs> strike three. Back to back K's of the looking variety. Here in the third for Adelman. Yeah, we speculated that uh, Adelman, and, and it looked like he was close to. Being out of this ball game, there was action in the bullpen that he'd have to finish his day's work down in the bullpen to get his pitch count up where it needs to be. But he's recovered nicely. It looks like he's going to be able to take something positive out of this outing here today. Butler with an RBI hit. Part of that big first inning. Back there, but plenty for Barnhart. And the Cubs go down quietly one, two, three, and after three, they lead six to one.
whether the Cubs are home or on the road. Guided tours of legendary Wrigley Field are available. Tours may include visits to the press box, clubhouses, dugouts, as well as a chance to actually step on the field. This must see Chicago attraction houses over 100 years of history. Book your tour at Cubs.com slash tours today. Wrapping up a big league weekend in Las Vegas. Cubs won 11 to 7 yesterday, leading 6 to 1 today. Jesse Winker hit a leadoff homer in the second, and he'll be the first batter here in the fourth. Other big league news the uh, Blue Jays made it official today. Marco Estrada will be their opening day starter. See the Blue Jays later this year at Wrigley Field. And if you're wondering, Jay Happ will go in game two. Stroman, Liriano, and Sanchez will round out the Jays' rotation. So we're still hopeful of that Hap v. Hap matchup in Toronto. Down here. I'm going to call Ian up just for that. Just to give us something to talk about. Winkers had a good day. Two for two. And he's going to try now. He's going to put on the brakes. Reds have a hit in every inning. Lead off double here in the fourth. Do you think if he tried for three, Winker would have ever had a chance? See what I'm doing? I know where that was going, yes. You know, tinker to ever the chance. I don't know if he ever had a chance. Yes. Either, yeah. But I get it. I get yeah. it. Good try. You work on your material in spring training and you cross yeah, some things yeah, off. Yeah. And you might, might not roll that out in a regular season, right. but certainly worthy of a shot in March. Yeah. Well, Winker could end up being a big leaguer before long. Reds traded away Jay Bruce last year to the Mets. Because Scott Shebler will be the primary right fielder. Dusty Baker announced today Steven Strasburg will take the ball in the Nationals opener. Against Miami and home next Monday. As grounds out, Winker now at third, one away. Why not Scherzer? Uh, battling some injuries, I guess uh, they're looking at Trying probably game three for Scherzer. Mm. Interesting. Yeah, I know he's got that. He's got a knuckle. He has some sort of a finger issue because he's been yeah. throwing a three-finger fastball all spring, and apparently he did last year as well. Steven Matz, the talented left hander for the Mets, has got elbow issues again. On the right, Winker ready to tag. And Rioli trying to get a good angle. A great effort. Sack fly for Irvin at six to two. Cubs will appeal, and he left early. So Winker apparently left before the ball hit the glove, and he is called out on appeal at third base by Dana Demuth. So that's it. Inning over. Still six to one in the fourth.
introducing a game-changing new premier experience at Wrigley Field. With seats featuring prime views and access to an exclusive club, this experience will allow fans to enjoy Cubs baseball in a whole new way. Visit CubsPremier.com to join the premier client priority list. Rizzo with two at bats in the first inning. That's the first pitch Adam and threw for a home run. He struck out later in that six run frame. And called strike. Yeah, and that second at bat and a lot of fastballs inside part of the plate from Adelman. Now, after strike one, they go full on shift. The entire, well, essentially the entire left side of the infield is vacant. And I was thinking about trying to guide one over that way. Never seen a shift this drastic. And they waited till I got strike one. Once in a great while, Anthony with the shift will. Try to push a bunt towards third base. That's why they waited till there was a strike, less likely to do it down a strike. Still going to have people, understandably so, especially if you're at the park and you can see the whole field. Well, why doesn't he just poke one down the third base line? Well, it's easier said than done, number one. And number two, the Reds kind of want Rizzo to do that. Take him out of his game. And that's the one thing with the shift. That's a very easily caught ball by a third baseman. And Suarez right now looking at his dugout from short going, <laughs> what am I supposed to do? I'm I'm a hundred feet away. This has just not been Tim Adelman's day, has it? <laughs> yeah, gets Rizzo to hit that meek little pop-up foul and <laughs> nobody no there to make a play for him. <laughs> I normally don't you know, contemplate defending foul territory, but it would have been an easy out. Votto will take it unassisted. Well, I do think in the shift, you know. Would you maybe ask your pitcher and say, just so you know, I mean, you don't want guys diving all over the place like Travis Wood, but. Yeah, I think you have to be aware of the fact that you don't, where your infielders are, and that you might be an option to make a play. Bryant with a double and a fly out. Homer yesterday. That'll be it. For Adelman. Here comes Jim Riggleman. Left hander Nick Rout is coming on when we return in the fourth, six to one cup.
215 pounds. Mississippi State University product. Jason Chris Bryant, one out, nobody aboard, fourth inning. Relief appearances in the minors last year for the Reds. Combined to post a 198 ERA. Originally from the D.C. area. 3 0 on Bryant. Green light. Oh yeah, for sure. Didn't want it. The guys don't feel comfortable hitting at 3-0, but you know, the way that the game is played now, pitchers are so stingy, so unwilling to give in, and what we used to consider fastball counts, 2-0, and 3-1. 3-0 is still the, you know, the one shot you feel with some certainty you're going to get a heater. Even even then we have seen pitchers not throw fastball from time to time on three and oh. Yeah that's a good looking lid right there. It gets uh, the job done. Our first quality hat of the spring. Are you walked him. Rademacher, who pinch ran for Kyle Schwarber for a first inning walk, rounded out in the second. That's here in the fourth with Bryant at first. That's a strike. Back to Arizona after this one. More days of the Cactus League. <laughs> Off to Houston. For two. That's it for spring training. Been a long haul. First game was back on February 25th. Although it feels like it's gone quickly. Well, I think we're now at the phase of spring training where everybody involved sees the light at the end of the tunnel. You know, a few days ago, a week ago, maybe you're kind of in that kind of stagnant area. It's like, okay, man, we've been here a long time. We've played a lot of baseball. Let, let's go play. Start to get a little antsy. Now, you know, the opening day is getting closer and uh, the energy level starts to, to pick up again. And this is the time of spring training, too, where managers like to see their guys pick up their game a little bit. Maybe treat it a little more seriously. You'll some, see managers use their relief core. Final week of spring training, like they might use it during the regular season. Yeah. Hooked in the right. Nice piece of hitting by Rademacher. That will send Bryant to third. Bijan proving that he's just not a cool name. He can swing the bat a little bit too. That front side starts to leak out him a little bit, but he does a real nice job of keeping the hands in and then able to go down and get that ball and lash it into right field. A career 283 hitter in the minor leagues started his career back in 2012.
Almora with a three run blast in the first. Big league debut last season, 47 games. 77. For me, stellar defense. For me, he he might be the most intriguing player on the Cubs right now, because we're still not sure exactly what you're going to get out of him. You know, he's an outstanding defender, big, strong kid. Um, I mean, he's going to hit enough to be to be an everyday player in the big leagues. But I think, and and the question is how much. I mean, I, th I think there's power in there that we haven't seen yet. And I think if he, if he develops quickly. This platoon with he and John Jay in center field could could morph into something where it's 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 more about more being an almost everyday guy and John Jay just spelling him from time to time. But Jay's a, a nice insurance policy in case Albert struggles. He was the Cubs' first ever draft pick under this front office regime as he's going to knock in his fourth run of the ball game, maybe his fifth. No, nope, Franklin Fox going to stop Rademacher third. A double for Almora. It's seven to one. Uh, this isn't the case, but it's almost like the cut hitter for like, okay, we, we inflicted all this damage on Adelman, so we're going to back out the gas pedal on him. But here comes a new guy, so let's punish, let's punish him a little bit. A chance for more second and third with only one away for Tommy Lestella. Yeah, I, th I think you hit it right on the head. I think Albert is, is a very intriguing player. He'll turn 23 in about three weeks. Because it took him a little longer to get here than some of the other top prospects. And he's a name we've been talking about for a long time. And the, and the things he has it that I love, and that I know this front office loves, he's got baseball instincts, and he plays great defense. That's a that's a terrific baseline to start from. And I agree. I think he'll hit at this level. It's a matter of how much. Yeah, yeah. I think you know the, 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 the skill set is there. You know, a little more discipline at the plate. You know, force pitchers in the strike zone a little bit more often. Two and two on Listella. Well, and the other thing too is, you know, just the idea of being able to to, to still develop a bit at this level with what you have around him. That that's enormous too, right? There's no pressure on him right. to, to carry this team in any way. Estella with a base hit. Rademacher scores. Almora wanted to, but Franklin Font stopped him at third. Eight to one. Estella's had good at bats today. He hit the ball very hard first time up. He lined out. Then he worked it off, and now he uses those good hands. That great contact skill set. Bat to ball. Delivers an RBI single. Shallow right and caught nicely done by the second baseman Perez and his throw hits La Stella. Two outs in the inning. Tommy would have been out if he was playing kickball. That is true. Uh, he's got his back to the plate, so he's just trying to wheel around and get this thing back into the infield as quickly as possible in the general direction of home plate.
Santini will bat from the right side. And takes a pitch low for ball one. Caratini was the teammate of uh, the Astros on shortstop, Carlos Correa, the Puerto Rican Baseball Academy. Six in the first, two more here in the fourth. Nineteen runs so far this weekend for the Cubs. In about twelve innings offensively. Yeah, and I, I would do what uh, thirty some hits combined in the game yesterday. I would think if you were setting a line. You would have maybe set the over under probably twelve runs for this one today. So we were talking uh, earlier this morning and uh, apparently in Las Vegas there's uh, an analytics movement which is very yeah, interesting yeah, in the, whole, the gaming industry yeah they've taken uh, a little bit from baseball Caratini with a line shot that's going to get to the wall here comes Almora Estella will be held. And I think that's a smart play for Franklin Fon. Some Cub fans here are booing. And that's almost always a sin, but spring training, it's nine to one. Might as well hold them. Yeah, absolutely hold them. A good stroke there by Caratini, the switch hitter. He gets a hands pulled in and barrels it up. Got to keep an eye on. Analytics is a, is a big part of the NBA, the National Hockey League. Paul D. Podesta, right, went to the NFL's Cleveland Browns. But it's it's spreading throughout the sports world, and now I guess gaming. Is yeah, I was talking to a buddy of mine who's who's in that industry last night. Pretty intriguing stuff that he's doing. NBA with an emphasis on statistics from uh, MIT. He used, to, he used to write for the Houston Chronicle. He was a beat writer for the Astros. Uh, writes occasionally still for baseball prospectus. A very sharp mind, and yeah, they, they do all kinds of analytics on you know, table games and, and odds and trying to create new games. Did you tell him about you make the call? No, but that's a good idea. Good Vegas yeah. game. Be a good hobby for you. Come up with ideas for other people to work on. <laughs> exactly. That would be your title. Yeah. You were telling me the, the the game War, the card game. Yes, you can play you War. Can play that here yes. in Vegas. Yes. Game we all learned when we were yeah. five. Yep. Round with a two-two, and Rioli sprays it foul. Yeah, I'd like to sidle up to one of those tables and let's go, old maid. Gin rummy. Yeah, I think war would be dangerous, though, right? I mean, you, you, you say you've lost a bunch of money and you're, you're going to go home and you walk by that table where they're playing war, be tempted to, well, just my card against your card. You got a 50 50 shot here. Yep. Oh. Call 
out strike three to end the inning but the Cubs add three to their lead nine one after four. is brought to you by Budweiser still brewed the hard way this buds for you gimme 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 everybody wants a souvenir nine one Cubs fifth inning Butler still clipping along 65 pitches made to this point. There's action in the bullpen so this will likely be his last inning. Swinging strike on Barnhart. <laughs> Brian Dunsing. See Carl Edwards Jr. a little later as well. <laughs> hard laid off. It's three and one. A lead off walk. First one issued by Butler. Travel like a world champion with Cubs destinations. Packages include game tickets, hotel accommodations, ballpark tours, Cubs swag, and a private meet and greet with the current Cubs player. We're part of our first trip of the season to Boston's Fenway Park, April 28th through the 30th. For more information, visit Cubs.com slash destination. Adrian Nieto bench hitting and Taylor Davis just into the game and get it Nieto with a base hit. Tough break for Butler. He got the ground ball he was looking for, and he's a guy who's worked a pretty high ground ball rate throughout his career. 
Well, it'll squeak through for a knock, and now it's um, a little bit of a jam to contend with. First and second, nobody out for the speedy Billy Hamilton. Word out of Arizona. <laughs> Diamondbacks pitcher Robbie Ray mm -hmm. just got ejected for arguing balls and strikes while batting. Oh my word. <laughs> I'm guessing there's some carryover from the, the strike zone while he was pitching. I'm guessing so. The dog days of March are upon us. Right. Rare to see a guy get ejected in a spring training game, but I've seen it two or three times. Not seen it in person, but well, Yasiel Puig get tossed earlier this spring against the Cubs for slamming his bat down after a strikeout. I mentioned earlier that uh, you know talking about three O counts and now that's the one time you can count on a fastball. I think for a guy like Billy Hamilton, two strikes is a good time to bunt because it's the one time where the infielders back off a little bit. Totally agree. And, and your best point about the two strike bunt is the batting average with two strikes is usually very low. Right. So you're not giving up that. Much in terms of the odds. Yeah, if you try to push a bunt to third base and it's foul and you strike out, I think there's, there's a stigma to it. You, you, you know, people are what, what are you doing bunting with two strikes? But when you, yeah, when you contemplate the odds, you know, what his batting average is with two strikes, um, I think it's well worth it with the third baseman back for him. To, and you can even, you know, square around a little earlier than he normally would. Davis will step on first. And the tag applied, so Butler does get his ground ball double play. This time, three to six. It's about the only way you double up Billy Hamilton is to get him first. Hey, time now for the speed replay brought to you by Xfinity, and by golly, it just happened. How about that? Sharply hit by Billy Hamilton. Nice play by Jalen Davis to clean things up for Eddie Butler. The speed replay is brought to you by Xfinity, Xfinity X1. Will change the way you experience TV. So in this case, the Taylor did it. You got a Butler, a Taylor. Strike on Alcantara. Who will be very happy? I showed Carl Edwards Jr. earlier. He's a big South Carolina fan, right? And yeah, they yeah. Won. I think he uh, didn't he do a ser yes. ceremony uh, before one of their games this year. Yeah, they honored him. Oh, good block. All right, so CJ sitting in the Cubs bullpen. Right. Mm -hmm. Spring training. Do you think he knows that the Gamecocks are in the Final Four? Do you think yes. word has gotten to yes. him? Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if he had a phone down there with him watching it. <laughs> to tell you the truth. Bounce towards center, smothered by Young, and he just can't get him. Contra runs well. Barnhart scores. It's nine to two. Well, that leadoff walk does come around to bite uh, Butler, but really nice play by Chesney Young out there behind second base. And the belly flop gets to his feet and throws just a little bit late. Good effort. And that'll be it for Butler. Boys to grab his fifth Cactus League win this spring. A hill head off with a 9 2 lead in the fifth.
veteran left-hander Brian Dunsing, who earlier this spring dealt with a little back discomfort. Facing Joey Votto, who fouls to the screen. Uh, so the situation presents itself where David Martinez could bring Dunsing in to face the talented left hand leading Joey Votto, and that's Dunsing's primary job. That's what it will be during the regular year. And kind of a lefty specialist. He missed two weeks before returning the other day against the Diamondbacks. Dunsing broke in with the Twins back in 2009. He's now 34 years of age. One note to look at. Here this next week, and I don't know what the date is for backdating DL stints to start the year. It's usually around a week before the season. There is no more 15 day DL, it's now a 10 day disabled list. Seven day concussion, 10 day DL, and then the 60 day take a guy off the 40 man roster. Played inside. Good pitch. He froze. We can tell Vada was kind of looking middle away there. He's gone to left field both times today. With the left hander on the mound and two strikes, I think you're playing to Vado's strength if you work him middle away. And Dunsing tried to beat him with an inside fastball, didn't get the call. Curve got away from him. Full count three and two action time for Alcantara with two outs. Oof. Awfully close. Brian started to walk towards the dugout. Yeah, a little bit outside, perhaps. Fastball in on Suarez, 91 from Dunsing. It for the Reds in the fifth. They do get one, but still trail the Cubs nine to two.
own a piece of Cubs history as part of the Cubs ongoing effort to restore and modernize Wrigley Field. Several sections of seats have been or will be removed. These seats are now available to purchase in sets of two. Visit Cubs.com slash seat sale for more information. This is Lewis Coleman pitching and Brian Dunsing leading off. It's a big league time for Coleman as a Kansas City Royal in last year's 61 appearances for the Dodgers. Get off to a late start this spring with the Reds due to some shoulder issues. This is just his fifth outing in the last couple of weeks. Good emphatic call by the home plate umpire Dan Bellino who we assume to be Dan Bellino. I thought he was back there yesterday. He must, have, he must have lost a wager with his fellow umpires. He's working back to back games behind the plate. Ball strike three. That is the Chicago native. What a gamer. Mike Trout, did you see Mike Trout bring up an interesting idea about umpires? Uh, no, what did he say? I think I have this right. He said umpires should treat spring training like the players do, and that is have the veteran guys only work five or six innings and then expand the pool of minor league umpires working spring games to get them some more uh, experience. So for instance Dana DeMuth first week of uh, spring training Dana's out at uh, yeah second base. Why not have him just go five innings and then bring a guy up from single or double A to work the final three or four. Sure. Or like Major League Baseball does where they deem certain players ready for an invite to major league camp some minor league umpires you know there has to be some threshold of competence where you say oh, you know you sure. deserve a call up you're going to work I mean they do use minor league umpires during spring training and the regular season but once uh, once the minor league games start then there might not be enough umpires to go around I don't know that is true well, by then, you would think the veteran guys would be ready to go all nine. It's way harder to get to the big leagues as an umpire than it is as a player, right? They just aren't as many. And, you know, guys. They hang on, they stay, yeah. Very, very few players play for 35 years. <laughs> very small. Now Kerwin Danley played college ball with Tony Gwynn. San Diego State. Yeah. Hmm. Well, Davis is out. Now in theory I would think. Former players. Would be really good at it right. I don't know. That's, that's a good question. I mean, I think back in the day, it wasn't all that uncommon for, uh, I mean, way back in the early 1900s, say, that, that that happened a lot where players, when their playing career was over, they went and became umpires. Fire action from Coleman. Two and zero oh on Bryant. Do you think with the little 
disclaimer kind of at the end of the new replay rule that they will stick to their guns on the two minute limit. I don't know the fact that it's be, it's called a guideline gives me pause. Three and one. So I'm guessing that will be handled differently by different umpires. I think some guys are going to you know some guys with a little more cachet in the game. Some guys have been around a little longer maybe. Of course it's always going to be the crew chief's call right. So those are all guys with experience. But I think some guys are going to try to push it along and other guys will be probably a little more patient. Here's how it reads a conditional two minute guideline for replay officials to render a decision on a replay review. But the three key words in the sentence allowing various exceptions. Bryant takes the walk third time he's been on. And I'm wondering if he might come out to a standing ovation and I think that'll happen. So Brian had a really good weekend back home. Leaves for a pinch runner here in the fifth. David Bodie, maybe? David Bodie at first. The other new rules that will go into effect next Sunday the no pitch intentional walk, the 30 second limit for a manager to determine whether or not he wants to challenge a play. Do we still, do we have any idea when the clock starts on that? Don't know. I would assume when the play ends. When a manager has exhausted his challenges, crew chiefs may now invoke replay review for non home run calls beginning in the eighth. Instead of the seven. Push that back an inning. Six shoes. Two minute guideline for the replay review in New York. Can't use any markers on the field. That would create a tangible reference system for fielders. <laughs> trying to get rid of that second step for a pitcher, the Carter Caps rule. And the base coaches have to be. Essentially in the box when the pitch is thrown. So the Cubs in the fifth do not score, but they lead this one nine to two. To the sixth we go, Cubs nine, Reds 
two. The Cubs offer special programs designed for your future Cub, from kids Sundays at Wrigley Field to Clark's crew and baseball summer camps throughout Chicagoland. There are many ways to build lifelong Cub memories with your kids. Visit cubs.com slash kids to learn all about our Cubs kids offerings. Well, we said middle innings, the kids would start to slide down the hill. We were right. Jesse Winker yeah, much, has homered in double. Much like most exhibition games, they start to slide downhill in the middle inning. Figuratively <laughs> and literally. <laughs> <laughs> You're under arrest. Well, Winker's been the man of the match for the Reds so far here today with a home run and a double. <laughs> One and two. Dempsey steps towards the first base line, throws across his body, creating some tough angles for a left handed hitter. Continuing the umpiring theme, um, over under on how many years away we are from some sort of electronic strike zone. Mm. I have, well, first of all, I have no clue. Do you think it will happen at some point? Yeah, I'm going to guess yes. It, you know, as the technology gets better and better, and people start to believe in it more and more. I think it's you know as things evolve that will happen. Powering yeah. fly to right, and Rioli back at the barrier, and he's got it. Way out of here yesterday. Not enough today for Winker. Still another good swing. Home run double and a just miss for young Mr. Winker. Zach Vinci will pinch hit for Perez. What about you? Do you think uh, ultimately we will go to? Kind of yeah, I do. I think it's in some form or fashion. Now I've thought about this. Bodie has it go off the end of his glove, and Vinci is going to try for two, and he's going to make it. That should be a double. Yeah, and if Bodie doesn't try to glove this one and leaves it for Young, I don't think they're going to get Vinci. And perhaps Young would have had a shot at him. But if we used. The widely accepted technology that MLB uses for its strike zone. That we, you know, the graphic we, we show you every night. If you made that part of the current replay system and gave a manager one or two challenges every game, but just included that, you could take one strike or ball call and have it reviewed and have the result be whatever the, the graphic says. Is there any doubt number one it would create a huge headache for managers trying to figure out what that one yeah, pitch would be yeah. and number two I would claim that I think a hundred percent of replay would be about those balls and strikes. So by just mentioning that as a possibility I think shows you how important those calls are. I think those calls would be reviewed Well, it's clearly was a strike instead of a ball. Versus a, a safe or out, and I think those calls would be used up early in a game. Right, bases loaded, three-two pitch, scores a run or not, you're going yeah, to review sure it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you're saying it'd be one a game, one or two, maybe. Yeah. yeah. 
But my, my, my point is that balls and strikes now have become so huge and so important because it's the one area we don't use replay. And I just think that when push comes to shove that there will be a, a tipping point. Yeah. Where a yeah. enough people will say it's just it's too important. We cannot continue to have these things reviewable and this thing not. Yeah. And my you know I, I don't know that I come down on the side of that it's too important. I just think if they get to the point where the technology is good enough and everybody believes in it then then I think there's going to come a point where they just say well, why not. Um, the one argument I don't understand is people will keep saying well the human element. Why why is there value in the human um, uh, element. It's a very difficult job to call balls and strikes as, as a home plate umpire. So if you can take that away why not take it away. I don't think it changes the nature or the feel of the game a whole lot. Right. So you think what's what's impeding any progress on that front is more about the technology versus it's, the and just the comfort level of, 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 of doing it. So I think it, it has to be again implemented in the minor leagues where you get players that are kind of used to it. Minor league managers and coaches that are used to the game starts to embrace it slowly but surely. Then it'd be played around with in spring training. And. You know if. if if there if there are glitches where people say oh no it's it's not working then maybe they step away from it but if it, if it proves to be significantly more accurate than having humans back there calling balls and strikes I think sooner or later you just go hey why not do it three and two. Well the one thing I think we both agree on is the technology train is not stopping and for those purists who push back and, and I get it some of these things I'm not totally on board with at first but it's just the way the world is throw him out he's going to get him how about that John Andrioli just saved another run for the Cubs got a guy tagged early on appeal. It's still nine to two. It could be nine to four. The old artificial turf. John Andrioli throwing out Tucker Barnhart at first base from right field, a 9 3 out. Sinking feeling for Barnhart as he's going down the line. He sees Andrioli get to that ball and come up throwing. He was well positioned, it was sharply hit, so he had all the elements in place. Got a catcher running. Generally, they're not particularly fleet of foot.
right hander Sandy Lugo. Will work for the Reds. So a run saved because that was a force out. Still a nine to two ball game. In the air to deep left center, Almora has done it again. Two homers, a double, five RBIs today. He is the king of Vegas. What a day for Albert Almora. Woo, center cut up above the knees and gone. That's the big high finish. Ten to two. Around a second. And an error on I believe that's Vincy. It is. A pinch runner now for La Stella. Bryant Plate. Young takes a strike. Kid Lugo's 23 years of age. He has not pitched above Class A ball. Second hit this afternoon. Caratini, two doubles, two knocked in. Team Cub hits. Here it comes. And that gets past Vincey into center. Plate will score. The ball hits. The runner Young, he's going to score. 12 to 2. Things unraveling here for the Reds. Off the bat, it looked like it might be a double play ball. Let's see. I think you overplayed that ball, actually. An air charge to the center fielder.
Hamilton. Still Hamilton. Yeah. He's having a long run. I get it. It's all about Hamilton these days. <laughs> it is. Sir Burks is on deck. No bat with two on and nobody out. Come in bunches for the Cubs today. Six run first, three in the fourth, three more here in the sixth. Still nobody out. Fun stepping off the plane the other day with so many minor league kids on this trip, and guys had their cell phones out stepping off the charter, taking pictures in front of the team bus, taking pictures of the of the Vegas skyline in the distance. Carson Burks hit a game-winning home run in the uh, Cactus League opener against Oakland on February 25th. Yeah, it's a nice carrot, isn't it? I think this is this is where I want to be. Yeah, you know, get that that taste. What it's like to be a big leaguer. It used to be, and you don't hear it so much anymore. But you used to hear that philosophy years ago. That teams didn't want their minor league conditions to be that nice because they didn't want guys to get comfortable. They wanted them to push to try to get to the big leagues. But it's kind of counterintuitive. You, know, you want to take care of guys. You want to give them the best opportunities to be comfortable. And great strides have been made in terms of minor league stadiums and the accommodations. Workout rooms, things of that nature. All <laughs> strike three. Just to give you an idea of how popular the Chicago Cubs are. Paid crowd at Sloan Park today uh, in Arizona, well over 15,000. We're probably going to have 11 plus here. So, two exhibition games here in March involving the Cubs are going to draw a combined 26,000 or so. Pretty incredible. One strike on Davis. I would venture to say that the clubhouses in the minor league parks today are probably almost all nicer than the clubhouses you would have used when you played in the big leagues. And that ball gets into the bullpen and might have gone out of play. So this. It's gone from bad to worse for the Reds. Caratini is in. 13 to 2. If this were the WBC, we'd be looking at a mercy rule. Or maybe even a mercy rule. There's a little confusion there as 
Barnhart and Lugo collide. Throws uh, Lugo a little bit off kilter. Aaron throw. Third error of the day committed by the Reds. Yeah, I don't know. You know, I haven't spent a lot of time in minor league clubhouses lately, but yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if that were the case, certainly at the higher levels. Well, I mean, this park was built uh, early 90s, right? Mid 80s? I'll look it up. Talked about it yesterday. And, you know, clubhouses are not particularly modern, but. Or very big. But I'm sure the Tiger Stadium visiting clubhouse was not real <laughs> spacious. <laughs> no. A little anger behind that heater. No, Tiger Stadium was tight. Visiting clubhouse at Wrigley's. Still. Right. Still. A lot of guys coming through town complaining about it. And I was say, hey, this it's the linkage. That's, that's the beautiful thing about those old ballparks, though. There's that link to the past. Ball four. Sending Bodie down to first. Now this park uh, in 1981 opened in 83. I don't remember exactly where it was somewhere along the way in class a ball. I just remember. A visiting clubhouse. A shower. That had maybe two shower heads for the entire team. And then the third option was like this garden hose laying there that you could. Turn on and hose yourself off with. It was, took a while to get everybody through there. I would think. Bases loaded, one out, four runs in. Up scored six in the first, three in the fourth. And they are putting a hurting on the Reds pitching staff. Something they did a fair amount last year. One and one. Mora led off the inning with a home run. Three hits, two walks, two errors since. Somebody's in trouble. 
strong law enforcement presence out there on the berm. E. A towering blast, and that'll be a grand slammer. D. John Rademacher. Rada makes it 17 to 2. <laughs> oh my, did he get into that one? Way back there. Yeah. Now he is minor league numbers. He hasn't been much of a home run hitter. You know, 10, 12 a year, maybe something like that. But whoop. he juiced that one. Big old leg kick. Hey, how about that launch angle? That'll be it for Lugo. Cubs 17, Reds 2. We'll be back. Jake well, Paulson, the new pitcher. Yeah, I don't know that Jake would. I don't know. But if they don't answer the phone when they call down there, who wants to pitch in this ball game? My goodness. But Jake Paulson is the next man out of the shoot for the Reds. He's a long, lanky 25 year old right hander. 27th round pick of the Reds in 2014. And today's bona fide player of the game is Albert Almora Jr. Two home runs, a double, five knocked in, three runs scored. Wrap your hands around the official Italian beef of the Chicago Cubs at one of the 19 bona locations. Made some loud noises with that bat today. Kale Brockmeyer batting. In Almora's spot. He led off this inning with that home run you just saw. That was foul to third. I believe the Cactus League high for runs this spring is 24. By the Milwaukee Brewers. Deep to right, Winker. Actually getting a little help from the win. It has uh, turned around. So two gone. And now it's Plate. You know where Wixom, Michigan is? I don't. For uh, Jake Paulson was born.
Dylan Floro. So the Brewers beat the Mariners 24 to 3 on March 13th. Got him looking. Cubs score eight times and lead 17 to 2 after six. And brought to you by Bud Fridays. Cheryl Crow leading Las Vegas. But fan cam as Carl Edwards Jr. pitches to Rob Grantley, ball one. Christopher Peters is in right. Burks is in center. And a strike. Easy gas, 93. Mm -hmm. That long, fluid delivery. And a base hit. So Brantley reaches to start the end. Here's Hamilton, 0 for 3. Fastball strike. <laughs> and 
Hamilton 0 for 3 today. Just into a double play last time up. Carlos, Carlos Pinalver is playing short. Two and two. 11,285 in the ballpark today. 22,740 for the weekend. Eddie Butler started, went four and two thirds, allowed seven hits, two runs. A walk, a strikeout, a home run. Ryan Dunsing, an inning and a third of scoreless ball. He allowed a hit. He shoot a walk. And now Edwards. Butler is going to be 5 and 0 oh this spring. He's going to be size spring. This wow. looks familiar. It does. So Hamilton has bounced into two double plays. And just like that one. Three unassisted to six. Brantley opts not to slide. Yeah, even if Brantley had beaten his throw, he would have been just tagged out after he passed the bag. Maybe he was hoping that throw would hit him in the back. <laughs> Edwards does his job. It's the first two men, and we'll be back 17 to 2. Cubs lead 17 to 2. Cubs claim floor off waivers from Tampa Bay back in January. Debuted with the Rays last season with 0 1 with a 420 ERA, pitching just 12 times at the big league level. And all the 15 and most of last year at AAA. Contra out in the deep left center. And he bangs it off that high blue wall. For a two out double. Two shots. There's Mendy had a home run in the ball game yesterday. Single and now double here this afternoon. 
Patrick Kiblahan. That is a strike. Laurel's 26 years old. He was the 13th round pick by the Rays in 2012. Ballpark houses the AAA affiliate of the New York Mets, the Las Vegas 51s. <laughs> Shallow right and off the glove of Flatte, and a run will score. Alcantara is in. It's 17 to 3. Yeah, this looked dangerous. Looked like there could be a, a real bad collision out there in short right field. Looks like everybody's going to be okay. It's one of those tweener balls where, where both guys are trying to make a play on it. And neither guy confident enough to call the other off. Nobody was able to peel away. Ball one to Suarez. Laurel played his college ball at Cal State Fullerton. Actually drafted twice by the Rays. 20th round out of high school, did not sign, and then got him out of college. So they had some sort of floral arrangement? They did. <laughs> Apparently did. Three and one. Penyalver, the shortstop. And it's the seventh inning stretch from Las Vegas. Cubs 17, Reds 3.
Now for our Honda Games summary. Big day of offense for the Cubs. That's the first pitch at the bottom of the first inning. Anthony Rizzo asked Gabe Martinez if he could lead off today. He said, sure, why not? And he gave the Cubs the early lead. Albert Almora Jr. with three extra base hits, including two homers, five RBIs. And Eddie Butler, with all that run support, pitched well today and has a chance for his fifth win this spring. Great deals are waiting for you now at your local Honda dealer. Carlos Penalver. Swinging strike. Wixom, Michigan yep. is uh, near Detroit. Jake Paulson is from originally. Carlos, a little guy, but he's got the pop in his bat. Just a kid, right? What, 20, 21, something like that? Twenty two years 22. old. He was only seventeen when he started in the Cubs system back in twenty eleven. Back to Paulson. Yasiel Balagert. There's some good looking cookies in that little uh, that area over there. Right Might next to our uh, yeah. broadcast but, booth. Well, just, yeah. Might have to make a little run this happening. Are they there for the taking? Uh, they're there. Okay. I'm just saying, if I'm not back, you know where I am. Oh, okay. The save route out here in Nevada. Back a couple of hundred years, right? To say, oh, that looks nice. I'll take it. Balagert's going to reach and field hit. Well, they've had all kinds of hits today. That's number 17. 17 runs on 17 hits. And over the walls, off the walls, in the gaps. A couple cheapies, but not many. They've done a lot of great hitting here today. Christopher Peters. So, who discovered the first casino out here? What explorer was was that? <laughs> I'm not sure who that was. Inside for a ball, two and zero oh on Peters. He's 22. Curacao. He has uh, done some pitching in the Cubs system. He's not pitched since 2014. Converted to position player, first base, the outfield.
Line shot off the glove of Alcantara. Should be an error. It's hit right at him. They're going to give him a hit. Yeah, okay. Going to reward him for the solid contact, but that line drive should have been caught. Of course, it's been a long day. But the official score generally doesn't take that into consideration. Be interesting if that was the, uh, the official scorer's rationale. Well, man, the pitchers have given up 17 runs. These poor guys out in the field have been standing out there all day. I'm not going to charge him with an error. Burks with two on. Been a while. I'm trying to remember the last time or if I've ever watched a game in which one team has scored 20 runs. It could happen today. With that. A cross up. Yeah. Looking for a breaking ball of some sort and got a two seam fastball. Brantley now catching. Charcer Burks, uh, the young man batting here for the Cubs, was a uh, gold glove winner last year. The Rollins gold glove winner for all minor league left fielders. Some of that. First playing at Myrtle Beach. That's a high A ball. Batted 247. But worked 66 walks and had a 356 on base percentage. Eleven home runs, stole 23 bases, was caught seven times. Foul ball. To three. I think we're going for blackjack today. Yeah. One, two, three, four. The fifth home run the Cubs have hit today. We didn't think they would surpass yesterday with the wind uh, really settling down here today, but it's just been one impressive swing of the bat after another. Talked about it in the ball game yesterday. It seems like whenever these two clubs get together, it doesn't matter if it's big leaguers, minor leaguers, the Cubs hit home runs when they see that Cincinnati uniform. Davis takes a strike. Still only one out. Jimmy Ruggleman's going to hear about it from Brian Price when he gets home. What in the world? What happened, happened to you guys over there in Vegas? What are you doing? Alcantara to make this play. Two outs for David Bodie. Kind of game that really helps your run differential. <laughs> hey, if you're interested in Ross Detweiler, he can be yours. Looks like he's opted out, had an opt out in his contract with the A's and has exercised it.
Braves have signed David Hernandez to a minor league deal. He was just released by somebody the other day. Giants, Giants let him go. Start to see guys take their release. This game of musical chairs here in the final week of spring training. To grab a final spot on a big league roster. Daniel Corsino getting loose. Alcantara to end the inning. Cubs have scored at least three times in four different innings today and lead 20 to 3. The Cubs lead this game 20 to 3. And they're not done batting. They'll have another three outs to work with in the bottom of the eight. Former Red Daniel Corsino will pitch here in the top of the eight. Corsino uh, supposed to just do two Cactus League games. So you big league time with Reds a couple of years back. So I offer cookie to the radio guys. That's probably a good idea. You know, I want I got multiple varieties here. I have the chip oatmeal raisin, a little macadamia thing going on down there. Ballager playing first. Taylor Davis is now catching. Jesse Winker has Homer doubled and fly to the warning track. Did they uh Kum, yeah, Kum, Kum, Kum. They'll take a took a cookie. Shot. Pat was Pat was locked in. He care for any, but we'll get him after the inning. Winker bounces past the pitcher's mound. Plate for the out. There's Bincy now playing short. Oh, did you have any luck at the Corsino this weekend? Uh, no, you know I'm not I'm not much of a, uh, a casino game player. I, um, the, the college basketball got my attention a little bit, and I like to uh, like to place a bet on the Masters when we're out here. That's about it. I don't 
Don't dabble too much. One oh. Now one and one. And there's not a typo on your screen. It's twenty to three. The Rockies have selected the contract of Mark Reynolds. He had signed a minor league deal. Swing and a miss, strike three. Yeah, some guys, I think, had opt outs, right? Right around this time where yeah. they had to sign them or let them go. Reynolds will. I would imagine fill in at first for Ian Desmond. He was injured to start the season. Many one, two, three innings we've had I'm in this game. I'm just counting, and I'm, uh, uh, the Cubs pitching hasn't recorded any. Oh, no, the Cubs batters went one, two, three in the third. That's it. Yeah, they faced only three in the fourth due to the appeal play at home, but yeah, it's, it's a lot of traffic. 30 hits in the ball game, 23 runs. Whoop, other way. Peters has it. Misjudged it originally, but able to run it down. And the Reds go one, two, three for the first time today. Three. All Cubs after they won 11 to 7 yesterday. Wendelin Batista working for the Reds. I don't see if he has more luck than his predecessor. It's been a tough day for Reds pitchers here today. I guess you figure that's going to be the case when one of them is named Route. 
Mick Rout was the yeah. second pitcher for Cincinnati today. Adelman started it. He gave up six runs right out of the chute. The Cubs ambushed him in the first inning and actually settled in and pitched pretty well after that. Rademacher with a grand slam his last time up. Bautista, well, he's got a birthday tomorrow. He'll be 24. If I'm correct on my date. Yeah, manana, he'll be 24. He's from the Dominican Republic, pitched A ball last year. Had a nice year, five and one with a 2.51 ERA. John Daniel Medina in the Cubs bullpen. Bautista listed at six feet even, 185 pounds. A little hesitation, last pitch at the start of his delivery, maybe a little Johnny Cueto working. Club to deep right. And he bangs it off the wall. Here comes the throw to second. Not in time. The hits keep on coming. Just a little bit shy of his second home run this afternoon. He'll settle for a double. Another really good swing by Rademacher. We've had a lot of changes in this game, but just going by the batting position for the Cubs, one through nine, the number of hits in those positions, two, one plus three walks, three, three, one, two, four, Three, two. So four, three, two. That's nine hits combined in the bottom three spots in the order. Now, the way we play in Vegas, if the Cubs score 21, they win. If they score 22, they bust. Mm, yeah. Better be careful here. Todd Glazeman the batter and the one two look out when font coaching down at third had to quickly get out of the way. Two and two. Out of play, count holding. Blazeman born in Waco. Went to school in Hewitt, Texas. The third round pick of the Rays in 2009. Had committed to uh, playing college ball at Texas A&M and then opted to sign with Tampa.
Last year split time between double A mobile and triple A Reno that's Diamondbacks. He strikes out. Bryant Plate, left handed hitting infielder, 24 years old. Wide open stance. Takes outside for a ball. <laughs> Gorgeous day here. We've been blessed with very good weather this weekend. And the 2 0. Swing and a miss, 2 and 1. Some great scenery. Plate. How to make her the runner bottom of your screen at second. He walked him. <laughs> and that'll bring up Penalver, the shortstop. The Cubs split squad dropped a 9 4 ball game to the Padres today. Game played in front of a sellout crowd at Sloan Park in Mesa, Arizona. No meetings. Today Sunday, correct? Today is Sunday. We start in earnest one week from today. Yep. Cubs and the Cardinals Sunday night. John Lester, Carlos Martinez. I happen to uh, notice that the odds makers. Uh, have the Cubs as overwhelming favorites to win the division and actually win the World Series. Um, we figure about uh, 12 games better than the Cardinals and the Pirates in the NL Central is the prediction. Play it out. Well, that sounds pretty incredible. There's ball four to load him up. 
I, I think that sounds about right. Balligert with the bases loaded. Comes really in jeopardy now, busting this the blackjack situation. Yeah. Holy bounced foul. Bolton Wong made some controversial remarks when told about a possible platoon. Mike Matheny is thinking about it second base. Wong the other day said not interested. He has walked back those comments. Cubs are going to get a couple here. Twenty two to three. Balliger with a two run double. He's had two plate appearances, single and a double now for Balligert. No such thing as a single run inning. They're all crooked numbers going up there on the board for the Cubs this afternoon. Jumped all over that one. There's now somebody just now starting to crank it up down in the Reds bullpen. Here's the right fielder Peters second and third. So John Lester pitching for the Cubs opening night. It's definitely a chance Colton Wong won't be in the starting lineup right maybe Jed Jerko. Yeah and Jerko. He ended up putting up pretty good numbers for the Cardinals last year. Matt Carpenter has moved to first. <laughs> Line and caught by Alcantara, two gone. Well struck ball. Charcer Burks hit a three run homer in the seventh. JD, Twitter's blowing up. You yeah. Need, you might need to clarify your comments. Um, they think you just announced that in earnest is the Cubs opening day starter. You said we are starting in earnest. In earnest. Uh, a week from tonight. No, it is John Lester. Lester, Arietta, Lackey, Anderson, Hendricks. One through five on that first trip. So Lester will take the ball the first the second Sunday of the season in Milwaukee and then Arietta will get the home opener against the Dodgers. We go to the ninth. Twenty two to three.
Baseball has been brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Yes to low fares with nothing to hide. That's transparency. Honda, great deals are waiting for you now at your local Honda dealer. Xfinity, Xfinity X1 will change the way you experience TV. Wintrust, proud sponsor and legacy partner of the World Series champion Chicago Cubs. Subway, try Subway restaurants foot long of the day. Your Chicago area and Northwest Indiana Lexus dealer. And by Budweiser, still brewed the hard way. This Bud's for you. Underway in the ninth. Two strikes on Joe Hudson. John Daniel Medina pitching for the Cubs now. Cubs his third organization started uh, way back in 2010 at the age of 17 with the Orioles. Last couple of years. Well, since 2013 he has worked in the Pirates organization last year. Double A and then his first exposure to triple A ball came last season as well. Hudson strikes out looking. Brantley one out nobody on ninth inning. Shallow center caught by Penalva. That's been the kind of ball today that has dropped with the 32 hits combined. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he got a nice break on that ball, and he took charge early too, letting everybody know those outfielders coming in towards him that I got it, fellas. You can you can back off. Bo Amaral with two outs. Dina's first pitch bounces up there. Unfortunately, John Daniel will not uh, get a save today. Yeah, this would not uh, qualify, nor would you consider this a high leverage situation. A 19 run lead in the spring training game. Was, wasn't, there a, do his thing. wasn't there a save in a 30 to 3 yes, game? Uh, uh, Texas and Baltimore yeah, a few years back. Somebody pitched the final three mm -hmm. innings. <laughs> That's awesome. That's a cheap save. Oh boy, you buggy whipped that one. A lot of fans have left already, but there's still plenty of folks here enjoying the day. A lot of folks are just waiting around to hear that song. Out territory and out of play. Reds down to their final strike. Time to play that game we like to call. How's this game going to end? I'm going to go with ground ball to second base. Okay. I'll go grounder to short. Oh, oh man. So close. All right, since we're in Vegas, play the odds. What are the chances? <laughs> You're going to double down? No. The, well, yeah, what are the chances the next. 19 Reds can reach. 
One in how one, many? One in billion. 449 billion. Alcantara has gone the distance. Two out of four, and he takes ball one. One one in the dirt. So congratulations to uh, North Carolina. They've advanced to the final four. So both North, North Carolina and South Carolina making their way to the final four, along with Gonzaga and Oregon. A little bit different look in that tournament this year. The coast coasts covered. Right center. Score 22 to 4. Now, if you had said the game will end with a man being thrown out at home plate, <laughs> yeah, that would have been that would have been something. Yeah, if you were playing baseball bingo and that was on your card. Final out thrown out at home plate for bingo. That would be something. RBI double for Kidlahan in the seventh. Had a runner deemed out on an appeal play at third base today for leaving early on a fly ball to right. We've had a, a batter runner thrown out at first base on what appeared to be a line drive single to right field. I'm going with punch out then the ball game. That's my new prediction. A one two. Sweep this big league weekend against the Reds, and we'll head back to Arizona. Three more games coming up there, off to Houston, and then starting the season in St. Louis next Sunday. We'll wrap it up in a moment.